So all told, when it comes to properties, there's the Great House Boulevard home that Honus and his wife bought with a mortgage while Honus was a mere member of parliament. And in the four years, he was Minister of Education, earning the equivalent of around 60,000 US dollars per year, or 90,000 with allowances. There was the Arcadia apartment, no mortgage listed. The land at Waycliffe Close in Beverly Hills, no mortgage listed. The land for the Shenstone Beverly Hills house he's building, no mortgage listed. And around 525,000 US dollars spent building the house in the three years after Honus's Jamaica Labour Party lost the election in 2011. Honus, through a member of his team, said he wouldn't comment on the source of funds for any of his properties before the election, but even after, he didn't. He also said he would make his financial statement public at the end of March 2016, but he didn't. Despite several calls to Juliet Honus, a property developer, chartered accountant, and newly elected member of parliament, she didn't get back to us. What about property taxes? No, but he, pay, he has to pay property tax. At the time of our initial checks in the two weeks before the election, the house in Beverly Hills had an outstanding balance since 2013 on the tax administration's website. Amount? About $174,000 or U.S. $1,400 approximately. Property taxes on the Waycliffe Close land in Beverly Hills were listed as not having been paid since 2009, a total of about $175,000 or U.S. around $1,400. And the Great House Boulevard home that he owned with his wife, Juliet, that was listed as outstanding since 2014, owing Jamaicans $64,000 or about 526 US dollars. We call the tax administration to confirm. Volume is 1118. And you own it? Yeah. The amount is $64,000 outstanding at $50 for two years. All in. Honus or his entities were listed at the time as owing almost 413,000 Jamaican dollars, around 3,400 US dollars. It wasn't clear if there were any amounts owing for the apartment at Arcadia Drive. Caroline Hay, former deputy director of public prosecution, says, in general, no leader should be backed upon their taxes. We did not ask her specifically about Honus. No public official ought to be behind on their taxes. You are in a position when you are a public official in a position of trust and one would imagine an example to the nation as to how we, what values we want in positions of leadership. Days after 18 degrees north brought it to Honus's attention and before the election the ought to be behind on their taxes. You are in a position when you are a public official in a position of trust and one would imagine an example to the nation as to how we, what values we want in positions of leadership. Days after 18 Degrees North brought it to Honus's attention and before the election, the tax administration's website reflected zero balances for the two Beverly Hills properties at Shenstone Drive and Wakelift Close. However, taxes on the house he owns with his wife were still listed as owing as of our last check, March 18, 2016, even as he became Prime Minister of Jamaica for a second time. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Jamaica. Knows for comfort? How Andrew Honest signed off on taxpayers' money for a contract to his associates. 18 Degrees North just uncovered a trail of property purchases linked to Jamaica's newest Prime Minister, Andrew Honest. Now see how that trail led us down another path, that of government contracts awarded to his associates. Corruption will not be tolerated in this government. The property at Wakelift Close in Beverly Hills remains an open lot today. As it turns out, the owner, Andrew Honus's Abmat Incorporated, applied to the National Environmental Planning Agency to build townhouses in 2010, but that application was turned down. Representing Admat in this application was one Robert Garvin. And Robert Garvin is not a director in any way, shape, or form of Admat. No, but he's not. He's not. He's not. But why would Robert Garvin's name then appear on an application to the land development? I mean, the because he acting as agent, he's doing the process. Okay. <laughs> That's not unusual. According to company's office records, Robert Garvin is or was a director of other entities affiliated with Andrew or Juliet Honess. 
Positive Jamaica Foundation Limited, Sunshine Mobile, West Central St. Andrew Trust Limited, Omega Bridge Finance, and the now removed Delito Taxi Service. Who is um Robert Garvin? Garvin? Robert Garvin. Never met the name, never heard the name. But I, I do remember positive. But I did set a positive Jamaica, I remember that. Right, but he's yeah. one. Yeah. Positive Jamaica is um, yeah. in part a director by um, Garvin. I, I know he was a director of... of and by the yourself, way, one more thing. What about the fact that Garvin used this address, 28 Herb McKinley? Because this is my address, it's precisely what I'm saying. You're at 28 Herb McKinley, no? I know, so yeah. why Robert Garvin used it? And you because we set up the company here. Garvin, I'm not saying that. I don't remember the name. Separately, Robert Garvin is also listed as the director of Weskin Construction, along with one Donovan Simpson. Garvin used the address 25 Dominica Drive while setting up Weskin, the same address he and Honus used when registering West Central St. Andrew Trust Limited. Government records show Weskin Construction is receiving 14 government contracts, totaling 28.5 million Jamaican dollars, or around 386,000 U.S. dollars. This was between 2006 and 2009, even as Honus or his wife shared directorships with Garvin on... ...unit. He owes suppliers, because suppliers uh, gave him credit for the house he's building in, um, in, in, in Beverly Hills. And the source of funds for that was what? That one, I, 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 I can't, can't recall all of those details, but I seem to remember that he has always used the house that he, that house that he lives in and get loans and that sort of thing. We checked the title for the property where Bailey says both Honus and his wife lived at the time of our interview and found no additional loans or mortgages other than those originally taken out in 2002 when they bought the house for 7 million Jamaican dollars, around 144,000 US dollars back then. So you were satisfied then with the source of the funds in both cases? Oh, absolutely, 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 absolutely. He saved in US stocks and, and amongst his portfolio. So he was saving because these are savings. Is that savings from him alone or him and his wife? I do not level of personal detail. <laughs> That's, that, that would be... You know, yeah, I do not level of... Of what you know, is there any evidence? I know of nothing, I have known nothing else that he owns in relation to um, Admat. Okay. He, he currently owns Rada. We checked the title for the Acadia property and found that it was indeed purchased by the same St. Lucian company Admat Incorporated in 2008, again when Honus was Minister of Education. The price tag, 16 million Jamaican dollars, around 219,000 US back then, and again, no mortgage was listed. Further, we also checked whether Admat owned additional properties and found one more. A half-acre lot, also bought in Beverly Hills on Wakeliff Close in February 2009, also when Honus was Minister of Education, price tag, around 15 million Jamaican dollars, almost 173,000 US dollars, and again, no mortgage listed. So you've never heard of this week of close property before today? Um, let me put it this way. I have never handled. And when I look at the transfer, I see the names of lawyers who I know. And he's entitled to have more than one lawyer. <laughs> we all have to eat. I have an administrative, two administrative questions. What's the staff complement of the ministry? I know the permanent secretary is there. Right. So, currently we're at 109, um, but not all posts on the establishment has been filled. Actually, it has been very difficult to um, find the experienced staff uh, to fill the posts in the ministry. We have gone through different rounds of interview, um, some have yielded candidates, some have not. So we have here the detail of the establishment as approved. What percentage of, or how many of the 109 are currently filled now? Uh, what's a percentage that or remains? The, the numbers. You said you have 109 on the complement, but how many you have filled? About 30%. 30, okay. Right. So in, in some case, for example, in the executive office, we have five on the establishment, three filled. The Human Rights Division, five on the establishment. Only one has been filled so far. Legal Education, we have four of five. 
in the constitutional reform division, only one of five. Um, other divisions have full complement, but we are in the process. Interviews were held last round in February, that's just two weeks ago, and another round is coming up. I ask within the context of, I see you have a nice new headquarters in my constituency. What does it cost to rent that facility? Right, right. just about 4.5 million per month. 4.5 per yes. month, that's about 30,000. Right. So you would see what has been... Are you, have you occupied it yet or is it still in the process? No, we are there even You're though there? it's not fully built out okay. because we have to be there. Very difficult to find corporate space all at once right. and to have the full complement in one place. So we still have some areas of the ministry in another location, but mm -hmm. the corporate office is occupied, not, not built out okay. yet. The Jamaica Accountability Meter portal jam views as worrying the revelation that some government ministries have been unable to properly account for trillions spent over a 10-year period. Executive Director Jeanette Calder says the permanent secretaries must be called to answer. How was the money spent? That's the trillion dollar question being asked by Auditor General Pamela Monroe Ellis. In a Gleaner article, it was revealed that the Auditor General's department is being hindered from independently assessing how more than $1.6 trillion was utilized between two ministries and the Office of the Prime Minister, OPM. Those ministries are the Education and Health Ministries. Mrs. Monroe Ellis noted that for nine fiscal years, spanning 2012-2013, to 2018-19 and 2021-2022 to 2022-23, Parliament approved $902 billion, representing 13.7% of the national budget, to manage and administer public education in Jamaica. However, no appropriation account was done. It was a similar case for the Health Ministry, which Parliament had approved $695 billion too. The Auditor General said the Accounting Officer in the Ministry submitted 15 of the 22 appropriation accounts for financial years 2013-2014 to 2022-23, but those did not meet the standards for submission. As for the Office of the Prime Minister, three appropriation accounts representing an accumulated budgetary allocation of approximately $12.02 billion dollars are outstanding. Executive Director of the Jamaica Accountability Meter Portal, JAMP, Jeanette Calder, says based on the revelation, the country has been left in a quandary. She says the issue begins and ends with the Permanent Secretaries. The Permanent Secretary needs to make sure that after four months when the year ends, she sends her report to Parliament to say what have we done with the people's money. All right. When that don't happen, Delia, who's supposed to come and say what are going on? The people who get the report. Yes. Who are those? Are parliamentarians. So we have parliamentarians, for example, the Ministry of Health, for 10 years has not told our parliamentarians, told our Auditor General, what they have done with our money. How much money we're we talking about? Just a little bit under $700 billion. And that is a report that they have gotten every year for the last 10 years till it add up to 700, and 700 billion dollars. What is the work our parliamentarians are doing for us? She says what needs to be done is for citizens to understand the accountability framework because only then will people be truly held accountable for the crisis facing the country. What do we call for? The first time something goes wrong. The minister, minister. gentle folks, there right. are seven... There, no, 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 Simone, that's the thing. Maybe. There are 17 people in government with more teeth than a minister to that's sanction and to hold yes. people to account. Yes. We don't know them things, Adelia. Mm. So when these things go wrong, who we call? The political representative who in the law has the least amount of power to do something about sanctioning and holding. The most honorable prime minister would have advertised on his Instagram page that Jamaicans should see what he has to say to us in his budget presentation by logging on to his YouTube channel. Now, on the face of it, some people might say, well, it's social media, it's the way to go, but YouTube is monetized. I'm not so sure if that revenue stream is a part of his declaration. 
And I also think that there's an ethical um, concern here that our prime minister and ministers of government in doing the people's work and presenting information to the people, people are being directed to a live stream which ultimately provides revenue for the prime minister or any other minister of government that, that does it. We are here just concluding a town hall meeting um, that the PATH program has been having. And uh, again, the Minister Pernell Charles Jr. was streaming live on his personal YouTube channel. No, why not just the GIS channel? Why not just the PBCJ channel? Why not a YouTube, YouTube channel for PATH or for the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, where if in fact that generates revenue, there is no conflict of interest? I mean, the question can be asked reasonably. Are these town hall meetings designed as one of the objectives to provide a source of income for the minister? And if, in fact, that they are earning money from YouTube streams and the amount of views on the various social media platform, is that being declared, is that being turned over to the state? Because it's not happening on their personal time. It's happening while they're doing parliamentary presentations or presentations in parliament, if you prefer. It's happening when they're